When the going gets tough, the tough get going. This is how I installed Large X on the Ender 3. After a well-deserved uh, summer break, uh, I'm back to uh, go through the installation of the Large X on the Ender 3. I have a previous video showing how I got to the design, and uh, now this is the final result. And uh, this is how I got there, and uh, if you want to know uh, how I did, just uh, follow up. So after printing all the components, uh, we're now ready for the assembly. Uh, what you will need, a few tools, uh, Allen keys uh, as usual, uh, manual tap, uh, pliers, and uh, some kind of insulating tape. I'm using Captain in this case. The first thing we need to do is the disassembly, so I'm taking away the fan cover and uh, the complete uh, uh, upper plate. Uh, save those because we will need both the plate and the fan so gently pull out uh, the fan connector and uh, take away the fan with the two screws I'm suggesting to save all the screws I reused uh, some of them then the next thing we do we prepare for the assembly of the board onto the new plate I'm taking away the stickers because I don't like them, so I think I want this uh, installation to be neat. So I decided to take them off. And then the next thing to do is to install that key, that key shaped uh, um, holder on the, on the top plate. And to do this, we're also using the front uh, cover for the fan, for the fan holes. And now we're using the tape to insulate the heads of the screws from uh, the board because on the bottom part of the board you have exposed connections and you, want, you don't want to short anything. Um, very simple to do and uh, strongly recommend to do it even if uh, it shouldn't touch. The next thing to do, I'm using some uh, wood screws, small ones, to uh, connect the board uh, to, the, to the bracket and uh, I'm pre-threading the holes. Uh, the holes are printed uh, without any threads in it uh, while you print. So I'm using the tweezers to get some space and to apply some pressure. Uh, this is just to kind of pre-thread it so you don't need to do it on top of the board. You could uh, slip your screwdriver and damage something, so better to pre-kind of tap the holes itself. And then we go on with uh, applying the board and uh, we screw it in place. Sorry for standing a bit in front of the camera. It's been a bit difficult to shoot uh, this without getting in the way, so apologies for that. And then uh, you do this gently. There's no need to over tighten anything. Uh, the weight of the board is, is uh, pretty low, so uh, no need to over tighten. Remember, we're dealing with printed parts of plastic, so you don't want to apply too much uh, force or torque to the screws. You can see it's it's pretty stiff though, I mean, when it's finally assembled. And uh, you have your plug on the top, and this is going to be the top part of our new uh, enclosure. We go on removing the old one. Uh, when you remove everything, just make sure you're tagging the wires, so you're uh, uh, signing them up. This is my uh, device to get uh, to uh, to have the sensor, the leveling sensor work. Uh, it's not needed anymore because in the new board, one of the clever things they have is uh, that they have direct connections to the board for a, um, uh, for a sensor like this. So you just need to plug in the, the, the cables and that's it. So you don't need that, you can take that away. So as I said, remember to tag the wires because that's going to be easier when we're going to reassemble everything. After doing that, of course, you can save the board for a later project and you will also need a micro SD card, so save that as well. You take away the two front bolts of the, cover of the enclosure, just save them, they're going to be used as well. And we're also going to take away the display, the display is not needed anymore, so gently take out the ribbon cable and you can also save this for another project. I'm still thinking a bit how to use this. Final screw on the bottom and then we release the bottom cover and the sheet metal plate. This is not needed anymore so it can be taken away. Just tightening up the cables here, remove all the all the zip ties and uh, you know, tidying a bit everything for when I need to uh, 
rewire everything back up. Then another bit of magic and then we turn it again on the front side. So this is going to be a new enclosure. To get that in we need to take away the front pulley for the Y-axis uh, belt. So we need to take that out because uh, uh, the the enclosure fits in uh, inside uh, one of the notches in the extrusion and on the other two sides uh, we're going to attach it to the side frame but first of first of all we need to fit back the fan so this is the fan uh, that was uh, previously blowing uh, on the board so it's been designed to blow on the most uh, heating part of it which are the stepper motor drivers a uh, bit, yeah, I like fidgeting with uh, screws, so uh, a bit of fidgeting here to get it uh, properly in. You just need two uh, new nuts and uh, two new screws to screw it up in place. Then these are the screws needed to fit it to the side of the uh, other extrusion. I'm putting two washers to just uh, create some space because uh, we don't want the, ha the, the the tip of the screw to just uh, sit on the um, on the bottom part of the extrusion. So that is to create enough space uh, to make sure that the nuts are tight and the uh, the screw is not uh, pushing against uh, the bottom of the the extrusion uh, part. I'm not sure there is a, it makes a difference if you're putting the fan to blow or to uh, or to pull uh, so I put it in the same way it was in the previous uh, enclosure but I don't think it's going to make a big difference so yeah now we're tightening everything up uh, make sure you push a bit the corner uh, backwards so that it's uh, kind of flush with the extrusion just remember that uh, the thickness the front of the extrusion is going to be covered by the support for the new screen so you will have some space there as well and then you put back the uh, the pulley and just make sure you're pushing some uh, you're, you're putting some uh, tension to that uh, belt next we put two m3 nuts in the two uh, recesses uh, that they will be used to fit back the cover into place i'm using some tweezers i find the tweezers very useful then we are putting the stepper motor drivers as you can see the 2208 I have quite big heat sinks so I have uh, secured that the heat sinks they're not shorting anything uh, on the exposed contacts and uh, I insulate them with, with some tape. Never trust anything else than just uh, the uh, etchings on the board you have to match the the uh, connectors uh, very easy with these ones because they are color coded but still uh, never trust anything else just uh, check that they are matching uh, when you assemble them next we need to prepare with uh, the tap to, for the holes in the front part of the screen box a bit difficult to get it in focus but uh, what I did is that I just uh, decided to put a, a nut there to kind of act as a stop you don't want to go uh, all the way down because if the tip is pushing against the, the flat cover then this will pull out uh, the, the, the thread damaging it then I cleared up some space for this it's you know be very gentle be very careful with this because uh, the threads are thin and you don't want to damage anything so yeah make sure you're not doing it uh, uh, very harshly now check that uh, everything is clean and before removing the protected layer on top of the of the LCD screen and then you lay it very softly on top of the enclosure sorry for being out of the shoot here uh, and then I decided to put it back in the front just to make sure that uh, I have no debris on the table that could uh, scratch the screen so just make sure very gentle and uh, go easy with that just make sure your holes match and then uh, you put back your cover to the side you see there is uh, the exit for the ring button cable so to get out of that exit you need to uh, gently bend the ribbon cable and uh, put it so that it will come out I've secured it with a bit of tape suggest you do the same uh, just uh, to avoid it from slipping around while you're tightening, tightening everything up
make sure the cable matches the notch in the in the box and then uh, you put everything back together and uh, all the holes should match so now we take uh, new screws and uh, we uh, we assemble everything with the screws as usual I suggest you tighten everything up in a cross pattern so uh, one corner then the opposite corner and then the other two corners um, I've put all the six uh, holes but I just needed four of them I think uh, with four it's secure enough so that, that was fine for me so uh, I just uh, was done with four now you screw it back with the original screws uh, in, in its place and you will see that now it's flush with the front of the connection box and everything looks uh, neat and tight now it's time to put back the top of the box just the the, the ribbon cable will slide in it's there's enough space for it so just be gentle with it and you will be fine and you have the, th the three screws uh, to put back in place to make sure that the top uh, is secured in place and now the wiring wiring is a bit uh, cumbersome so I'm again using the I'm again using the tweezers to help me with uh, getting things into place and I also printed the, the diagram you'll find the link in the description with the end stops you have to be a bit careful because they are actually three pin but only two of them are used and uh, they're not matching with the two used by the uh, by the board so I've got this uh, extra uh, connectors which uh, you will also find a link in the description very handy and uh, quite inexpensive so you just have to pull pull out the the two pins and then uh, put them back in in the correct order uh, double check it with the diagram and you'll be fine you see here there's the, the three connections so you have to connect uh, uh, the signal one you see also in the small board there's three connectors because one is for the normally closed and one is for the normally open so you can use either of them because in the firmware you can easily change them with a click now that you have uh, wired up everything it's time to connect the mains power so I'm reusing the original uh, power cord of the and the three because there's not so much power going through this because the uh, the connection of the eat bed is separated and uh, I'm putting together the three wires one is for the one is for the mains one is for the board and one is for the fan I decided that the fan for the for the enclosure could be always on so I'm wiring everything up together just make sure try to pull them I mean they're not the same size so they can easily pull off now that everything is ready we start it up and uh, lo and behold it lights up and then you see the UI is reversed you can easily swap it by going into system UI reversal and uh, tada now it's in the right place Then you go into do the first setting, so you go into actually structure, uh, standard X, Y, Z, and then you go into advanced settings and you want to set your end stops. So you see the end stops, they are, you can choose between normally open, normally closed, and high or low. The good thing is that the icon will change, so you will see the, the small icon of the switch just uh, opening and closing, so you can... Uh, uh, change that and uh, you can check uh, you can check the condition without uh, actually having to do anything uh, strange or connecting anything after you've done that so you go you select uh, whichever suits your connection uh, pattern if it's like me you have to set it to high and then to just home you just click that I suggest you touch the uh, switch with your fingers before doing a full home because if something is wrong then uh, you avoid to damage something mechanically and uh, there you go so the x-axis is homed y-axis is homed 
not homing this, uh, but you see now the Y axis is actually going in the opposite direction. So uh, you can easily reverse that in the firmware. You just go into structure again. Now you go into motor, you go into direction, and then you just touch the one you need to reverse. And then the, the small arrow will, will turn around and that's done. Basically you have reversed the motor motion like that. Also in this case, uh, I already tested that the switch was okay, so you see that now it's going to be doing the homing. You see I have my hand on the switch, you never know and never safe enough. And there we go. Next, we test the heating. You just touch the heater and that will heat up. So you just touch it and there is a preset value, in this case it's 210. Just checking that everything works in my wiring, both for the heater and for the and for the thermistor, you see that the temperature is increasing, that means it's working. That completes our first setup, so the first uh, uh, powering up. Now you can power it down straight away, but there is also a shutdown function in the large uh, screen. And that concludes it for now. In the next video, I'm going to go through how to set up uh, everything properly. This wraps up the experience of the installation of the Ledge X on the Ender 3. It's been very instructional for me and uh, this is just the starting of the project. So uh, stay tuned to get it uh, up and running. I have a few new ideas to get uh, through. One is uh, walk you through the installation of the heat bed uh, uh, MOSFET. It's already in the machine now, but I'm going to walk you through that. And also reinstalling the bed leveling sensor. I removed it uh, for the time being, but uh, I'm going to put it back. And most importantly, I want to go through uh, how to set it up. Large X is a general purpose uh, board, so it can be set up for several different uh, kind of printers. And there's a few ways to do it, quite user friendly, and I'm going to walk you through that. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. There's also a small bell icon next to it if you want to get notifications uh, from the channel. And until next time.